Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you all for coming out. This is uh, my fourth time at SCC, and uh, it's my favorite event. Really happy to be here this morning. Um, my name is Mike Tango Bravo, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, Open Vino and the latest evolution that we've done with Open Vino with Cleros called BioDigital Certification. Just a little bit of background. Um, I've been working 30 years in in IT in the Web2 space and uh, made the really stupid idea of buying a piece of land in 2003 and planting a small vineyard in Argentina. And I say stupid because if you have no idea what you're doing, it's a huge learning curve like so many other things. Um, but quickly, I realized that uh, one of the interests that wine itself is a really interesting uh, product from the perspective of thinking about things like tokenization. You say, well, if I'm walking around SCC and I'm seeing uh, all these cool DeFi projects and layer two projects, and why do I care about wine? And wine is a really interesting vector for doing an a IRL experience with, uh, with all the things that we're seeing here today. So I'm gonna tell you what we're doing with OpenVINO and how this all ties in. Um, so, like I said, I started producing wine and planting a vineyard in 2003 in Argentina, uh, starting producing in 2007, and very quickly realized that uh, wine is so unique and is so uh, apt for what we're talking about in, in questions of, of tokenization, real commodities, because it's a product that has built-in scarcity. So when you produce a vintage, uh, when you harvest grapes and make a new vintage, you have a limited number of bottles that you're going to have from that year. It's a highly regulated and controlled thing. It's food, it's alcohol. And so uh, it's not like I can go back and make more bottles of a 2018 without committing serious fraud. So it has a built-in scarcity element to it, has a very elastic price, you know, people pay uh, there's $2 wines and there's $20,000 wines and everything in between. Something you don't see in, in other, like in beers and things like that. You could have the best beer in the world and you're not going to have a $100 beer, right? Whereas people pay pretty much a, a, a high, any kind of flexible uh, amount for a bottle of wine. And the third thing that makes wine really cool to do a project like this is that wine is a product that gets better over time until it doesn't. Right? It has a really interesting curve, whereas it could be some wines are good for two, three years, and some wines are good for 100 years, and everything in between. Right? So you have this interesting curve where it gets better, and then it falls off. You have this built-in scarcity, um, and you have this huge elasticity in price. And so that makes a, a really interesting element for tokenization. And so in 2018, uh, we started taking my production. It's a, a winery called Costa Flores. Uh, and we basically uh, created a platform, which is a front-end. Um, well, now it was, at that time it wasn't because it didn't exist, but it's a front-end for Uniswap. So essentially all we're doing is, is doing a crowd sale, issuing a number of tokens, uh, ERC-20 tokens, that map to the number of bottles of wine from that harvest, uh, and putting it on our platform called Open Vino Exchange, and allowing people to buy, sell, and... Uh, redeem tokens when the wine is ready uh, to drink. And so that's how we basically say, let's use the market force. Um, it's basically a, a copy of the idea from Unisox uh, to, to create a, a tokenization of wine. Um, but wine is also really interesting in that it's one of the products that, uh, like so many products that we have today where there's an attestation, uh, there's some sort of thing, some sort of claim that we see on the back bottle of the labels of bottles, uh, or pretty much any product, you know, is it uh, organic? Is it uh, for vegans? Is it uh, carbon neutral? Um, all of these different claims that we have for products more and more today, that's multiplied by 10 in the wine world because you're also describing a type of grape, a winemaker, a provenance, a style, all kinds of other things that these attestations are really what uh, the wineries are trying to convey. And there's a lot of fakery involved as well. So the idea is how could we uh, flip the existing certification system such that uh, we give our consumers, our buyers, our drinkers, the tools to validate actually what we're saying um, and also to eliminate or reduce the cost to the wineries to actually certify. So how can we 
enable a winery to self-certify their production. That's what we're calling biodigital certification. So this basically breaks down into three um, tiers. We're doing tokenization of, with a fungible token, basically creating liquidity out of liquid. Um, I'll give you an example. There's a, a winery that we're working with in the south of Spain that actually has a stock of bottles that are 100 years old. So that means they've been sitting on bottles for 100 years and are just now starting to sell them and reap some of the, uh, the, be the benefits of that, right? The revenue. So I said, well, let's just tokenize that. They can stay in the winery until somebody's ready to burn them and convert those tokens into bottles to drink. And the idea here is not to create a collectible that nobody drinks and is sitting in a warehouse someplace. Um, a lot of other projects are doing that with NFTs uh, related to very specific bottles. That's not what we're doing here. I want people to drink the wine. I just want to create a model for how can we generate liquidity out of this liquid. The second has to do with traceability. And here what we want to do is how can I capture the experience of the person that's actually sitting down and drinking, right? So right now, the way that we describe the quality of a wine, oftentimes, is I send a bottle off to a critic. Uh, in the wine world, you have people, you know, Tim Atkins and Robert Parker and uh, the, the famous people that you send the bottle, they have uh, two tastes of it and say, eh, 95 points, and go on with their day. Well, that model is very flawed, even though they are experts, because it's anecdotal. They're only trying one taste of one glass of one bottle of my wine. They're not doing a whole meal with it and, or over time describing it. So how can we get to capture the experience of the actual person that's drinking over their, their meal, right? Um, and then the last part has to do with the transparency question. How can I certify or self-certify what we're doing with production? So let's look through each one of these things. In the case of the tokenization, Essentially, we harvest the grapes. In the case of South America, we're harvesting uh, end of March, early April. Um, this takes a few weeks for fermentation afterwards. So we've got a tank full of you know, 10,000 liters of wine. Um, as soon as we know how many liters there are, we can calculate the number of bottles. And so we do a vintage coin offering uh, where we basically issue an equivalent number of tokens to the number of bottles and put those onto our crowd sale uh, with using a, just issuing a, a smart contract, minting ERC-20 tokens, and putting this up at sale for at a very low cost. This runs, in our case, from the 6th of May to the 25th of July every year. So we're just about to finish this week on the 22 harvest. Um, and then after the 25th of July, it Basically, the, uh, a portion of the tokens go into a liquidity pool, and anyone can continue buying tokens, but they can also sell tokens, they can farm their tokens. And after three years, in the case of my wine, because the wine needs time in, in a tank, in a barrel, in a bottle before it's ready to drink, people can start to redeem those tokens for actual bottles. Um, and the moment that you decide to redeem, we see where the bottles are going to be shipped to, we charge them an ETH for the shipment, and they receive uh, their bottles and drink them or resell them in their shops or in their restaurants or, or whatever it might be, right? So this is the life cycle uh, for tokenization of wine. In the case of you drink it, you own it, how do I capture the user, the drinker's experience? Um, we have a, a QR code on the back of the bottle. I say, okay, big deal. Um, but it's a serialized QR code, so every bottle has a different QR code. And basically what we're doing here is allowing anybody that has the bottle to scan the QR code, go to a site, ask them some questions about themselves, ask them to take a selfie with the bottle, and ask them five questions about their drinking experience. So very invasive, but if somebody decides to go through, scan the bottle, answer the questions, take the selfie, um, we issue one share of the company through a fiduciary trust. Right now we're using a traditional fiduciary trust to be able to issue a share. They become part owners of the winery, literally. And they can mint this in experience as an NFT. So think of it as a po-op of your drinking experience, right? Not an NFT that you're gonna wanna put on a secondary market and sell, but basically they're saying, I was in this party, I had this event, I was sat at home drinking, this is the picture I took. 
Um, this is the thing, and this represents the share of the company. I actually own a piece of a winery in Argentina in our case. So let's go straight to the transparency element then. So right now what we're doing is collecting different types of data, uh, IoT sensors in the vineyard that are actually writing on chain directly, um, collecting temperature, wind speed, uh, measuring soil moisture in different points of the vineyard, um, enabling uh, workers to use a, a very simple app to say today we are pruning, we're harvesting, we're irrigating, we're whatever it is the job. There's some 25, 27 tasks that get repeated over the year in the vineyard and the winery. So they actually uh, register that and sign it with a private key. Um, and then other uh, accounting data. So what are we spending on the bottle, on the label, on the box, uh, on the cork shipment, that sort of thing. What is our cost structure for the wine? So add all this together, and we can publish this both on our site with hashes on IPFS, within uh, uh, aggregating data onto, uh, and in fact, onto mainnet. So this information is there, and this is the reference of what is happening in the winery in the vineyard. Now, you're probably asking, who cares about this information, right? Why would anybody care what the temperature was or what somebody did on Thursday in the vineyard? And the reason it's interesting is for what we're calling biodigital certification. This is what we're doing with Kledos. We're essentially, think about it this way. Today, how does it work for an organic producer? And when I say organic, I mean uh, vegan, I mean uh, carbon neutral, uh, natural wine, uh, biodynamic, uh, fair trade, whatever the, the, the qualification we want to talk about is. So today the way it works is, I have an organic vineyard in Argentina, I call my uh, auditor, my certifier, they come to my house once a year, sit down in my house and drink coffee, and they say, hey Mike, did you spray any pesticides on your grapes this year? And I say, no, I didn't. And they say, great, could we see some receipts of stuff that you bought that doesn't include anything you're not supposed to buy? So I show them a bunch of receipts of stuff. Occasionally, they'll say, can we see a water sample or a soil sample? But they're looking for things like pH and fertility of the soil. They're not looking for a specific molecule like a glyphosate or some sort of pesticide, right? And they, they basically say, great, pay us, uh, you're certified and we'll see you next year. And it's, it can be quite expensive, right? So the incentives are completely misaligned, as you can see, because the certifier wants to give me the certification. Because the year that they say, no, this year we're not certifying you, is that the year that they lose a, a perennial customer, right? So they're already saying yes. Uh, if they saw something I wasn't doing correctly, they'd probably overlook it and say, OK, just don't do that next year, right? The other thing is that the amount of effort that they spend um, is always going to be the minimum possible. Because every minute they spend with me doing more exhaustive uh, auditing is, uh, is money they're losing, right? So that's the problem with the current certification system. And you can apply this to any industry in all kinds of different areas. So what we're saying here with biodigital certification is basically three pillars. One is, what is organic? So describe it in the 27 items that organic means. And we're not inventing this. This is based on EU standards, US standards, Japanese standards, basically saying this is what organic is. Here is our evidence. And this evidence, much of it or most of it, maps to information that's been published on chain from the sensors, cameras, 360 camera, uh, work logs, that kind of thing. But the third step is basically for the winery to say, and I'm going to create a challenger bounty with Kledos. So the winery will stake 5,000 euro or die or dollars or whatever it might be, some uh, substantial amount of money for 30 days, and say, I'm organic. If anybody thinks I'm lying, you can come stake uh, $2,000 and submit your evidence, and this will go to the Kledos jury. And they can vote on that and go, yeah, this is true or it's not true. So either I uh, get my $5,000 back after a month and, uh, and a digital certificate, it's basically saying uh, that I am organic, uh, or I lose that. So there's a lot of reputation cost there in, in doing that, but I actually want people to stake uh, against me to challenge because I get a portion of that staking, right? So 
this is how we can change a uh, uh, certification model, right? We're talking about uh, regenerative uh, Web3 economics. This is one way we can flip so that people that are actually doing the right thing, they are sustainable, they are carbon neutral, they are organic, it shouldn't cost them any money to do that. So that's, uh, that's basically how we've integrated with Kledos. Uh, right now we've got um, all of this running on testnet. We're basically waiting for, uh, to finish the procedure with some other wineries. We've got five wineries that we're starting out this year in Argentina um, and a couple in Spain and other places. And basically going to give the next uh, cycle, though, so 2022, 2023, uh, to make sure that the, the friction between the, the real world and, and tokenomics and doing our self-certification is worked out. I mean, the, technically, this is not that complex. Uh, what's difficulty is sitting down with a winery and saying, let's talk to your accounting department and your legal department and your uh, supply chain and, and your current certifiers and how are you doing these things and how can we change it to employ this model. Right? So this is basically what is changing. It's changing the way that we're selling wine, the way we're certifying wine, and the way that we're determining both price and quality of wine uh, using these three tools of transparency, tokenization, and traceability. I'll just give you a couple of the next steps that we're doing with this. Uh, one is onboarding new wineries. So we signed an agreement this year with the National Wine Board in Argentina. That model with them we want to replicate in different wine regions of the world and basically say, um, here's a tool for free for your wineries. It's open source. Any winery can use it. We'll add a provisioning tool. So it's a front end to collect data about the winery, about the token. And this will feed things like, how is this going to appear on the platform? Um, Plum, uh, Etherscan, uh, create the, the different smart contracts for deployment, both for the liquidity pools and for the, uh, the crowd sale. Uh, create the QR codes and the information necessary to print the back label. Do all of this in on, on one provisioning tool. Um, but at the end of the day, we're just minting tokens. So we're not locking in a winery. There's no co uh, custodial element to it. Um, they can receive their tokens and use them on any platform. Um, and it's quite powerful when you talk about the idea of turning a warehouse full of bottles into a currency of value that a winery can say, oh, okay, now I can actually use this to pay marketers, to pay uh, commissions on sales to pay part of my supply chain because I have my own currency that is tradable on on a DEX behind it. Um, so these are uh, some of the things that we're looking into. Um, also, because we're talking about a four hundred billion dollar industry that's spread across eighty thousand plus uh, wineries in the world, this opens up a lot of really interesting things. That if we're talking about putting sensors into different places, how do we do? real decentralization by creating a node what we call a Netrabrick, which is essentially a, a DAP node with other facilities that we can put into each one of these wineries. Because right now, like so many other projects, this runs on a web server and digital ocean. We're using Infura. We're, we're not decentralized in that component in the Web2 area. So, but we can do that because of all these different players. We just have uh, to give them a device and distribute the, the Web3 layer on top of those. So just one last thing I want to talk about to kind of explain as an example of how this also can be leveraged um, for, you know, there's all this talk about solar punk, uh, regenerative uh, cryptonomics and, and whatnot. We've created a project called uh, forum3.bio where essentially we're taking, harvesting the, all of the biomass from the vineyard that uh, usually goes to waste. So every year in the winter, you trim back all the vines and you end up with a giant pile of sticks. So we're shredding that, uh, inoculating it with uh, fungi, uh, with mycelium, and, to, and creating mycelium packaging for this so that we can actually grow the boxes that the bottles get shipped in uh, to the end customer. So imagine uh, you're buying your Cabernet Sauvignon from this winery and it comes in a box that is Cabernet Sauvignon plus mycelium and it replaces all the styrofoam. Looks something like this. 
um, these types, different types of packages. Now, we want to enable wineries to be able to grow their own packages. We don't want to, re we don't want to license this. We don't want to become a packaging company. Um, but how do you do that? Well, you create an open source platform with some rules of uh, engagement in a DAO and say, let's, how can we provide uh, the content on how to grow, who's our provider of a uh, proper spawn and whatnot for that, and be able to enable people to grow their own replacement for plastic using biodigital certification as the mechanism. Um, so one last thing, we're doing an event this evening. If you guys want to come out with Kledos, um, please join us about 6 p.m. We'll be doing lots of wine and other things in an abandoned train station here in Paris. It should be fun. Um, so it'd be great if, you, if you want to come out, just uh, contact us. And here's the contact information. So our exchange is openvino.exchange. And there's our uh, Telegram and Twitter and all the good stuff. So thank you all for coming. Um, I've got some, some bags here for some uh, swag, and also I brought a bottle of wine. I'm going to pour some glasses. So if you guys want, maybe you think somebody could help me. Pouring. Uh, if you guys want to have a glass of wine, 10 in the morning, that's a good way to start your, your day. So, thank you so much. Any questions? So. Are we doing on time? So because we're using really low cost open source IoT, uh, the sensors you know, for soil sensors, uh, weather sensors, different types of things is, is, is an insignificant cost. So I'm talking about, you know, $1,000 in, in cheap hardware. Um, we're using LoRa, which is a radio uh, with a solar panel and different channels to, to basically channel to a, a, a gateway, which is a Raspberry Pi that's with some other sensors. And we're working with Foam Space. I don't know if you guys know about Foam Space, but Foam Space is a cool project out of Brooklyn that basically allows you to triangulate with the LoRa signal and say, OK, I know that sensor is sending this data, but I also know physically where the sensor is uh, because I can triangulate it. So I'm not relying on the self-reporting from a GPS. So the idea is that you know that the, the, the soil moisture and temperature and everything, but you could also say, and I know that it's exactly in this spot. Right? But yeah, it's, it's an it's a insignificant amount of money. Um, it's much cheaper than than existing uh, sensors that are used in viticulture. And those are usually cloud services that you subscribe to, and you have a monthly fee and all of that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really not a thing. At the end of the day, what it costs a winery uh, to do this, to plumb all the services, are gas fees. That's about it for deploying the contracts. The idea is to make it as cheap as possible for any winery to do certification, tokenization, and traceability. Um, and make it attractive enough that they want to go through our front end that will generate some uh, transaction fees and, and other services that, that generates money for the platform. Um, but they're not locked into it. Well, thank you all. And uh, have some wine. So. <laughs>